the idea really is a, a bold one. It's maybe even slightly controversial. Uh, it's, uh, in preparing for this, I, I spoke to a couple of people in the finance industry, and they, uh, they said, uh, good luck with that one, then. <laughs> but what's TEDx for if it's not to float a bold idea and, and see where it goes? So bear with me. The idea is Guernsey could evolve, and the finance industry could evolve, to make Guernsey a place for financing for good. And I'll explain. Um, how private capital could be managed by this island and be invested in solutions that could solve some of the world's most pressing challenges. And what are those challenges? These are the 17 Sustainable Development Goals, agreed by and signed on to by 193 member states of the United Nations uh, in September last year. Laudable goals, ending uh, global poverty, uh, ending hunger. Uh, every person in the world has the ability to go to school. Tackling climate change. These goals have been agreed to, uh, and the target is to achieve them by 2030, 15 years' time. Here's the rub. It's going to cost a little bit of money to do this. The bean counters and economists at the UN estimate that it's going to cost four trillion dollars annually <laughs> to, uh, to figure out and solve these issues. That's a lot of money. So how are we uh, stacking up to date? So right now, annually, the richer countries in the world give the poorer countries around 135 billion dollars in overseas development aid. Another $680 billion comes from private investment, foreign direct investment, into, into those poorer countries. An additional $430 billion comes from global migrants that are working in richer countries and remitting that money back to their families. So it's about $1.2 trillion in total. There's inefficiency in the system. If every richer country actually met its commitments that it signed up to of 0.7% uh, of global uh, national product, uh, gross uh, national product, uh, it would increase the supply of, of funding. If um, developing countries were helped to actually effectively tax their own population, if they were helped to effectively tax multinationals who are operating in those countries, we could get more money in the system, probably up it to about 1.5 trillion. Um, there's still a big gap. We've got a gap of $2.4 trillion. I remember that every year. So where's this money going to come from, and, and how uh, are we going to, to make, make this, 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 this kitty, build a kitty and, and transfer these funds? So the idea is one of blended capital. We talked about that $680 billion that goes in terms of private investment into uh, poorer countries. How can we exponentially grow that 680 million into becoming trillions? This idea of blended capital, that uh, overseas development aid that we talked about, the, the money that richer governments give to poorer countries, uh, that money combined with ph philanthropic money could be used in a way to mitigate the risk of private investors investing in some of these global challenges. Uh, for example, uh, first loss guarantees, matching capital, other forms of risk mitigation that would attract and make it attractive for private investors to in invest in some of these global challenges. Um, this is not pie in the sky, it's, it's actually happening. Um, the idea and the concept is one of impact investment. Um, impact investment uh, is uh, a market, uh, it's one of the fastest growing asset classes. Uh, the economist uh, Jeffrey Sachs said that there's $22 trillion of private money locked up in savings, mostly on corporate balance sheets. Um, it's about seeing where there are opportunities to um, divert this capital into impact investment. And what do we mean by impact investment? Basically, investments that have social and or environmental returns and outcomes are alongside clear financial returns. So let's just be very clear about this. This is investment with 
blended financial, social, and environmental returns. It's not charity. So this industry of impact investment, uh, JP Morgan put out a report recently uh, that said that the industry is, is growing fast. It's $60 billion right now, globally, assets under management, uh, growing at around $10 billion a year. And estimates are by 2020, this market could be $1 trillion, uh, which is about 1% uh, of global assets under management. What does this look like practically? It's conceptually, I've talked about it. What does it look like practically? So let's take agriculture. The German government uh, recently launched a fund, uh, African Agriculture Fund. They kicked in $60 million as a first loss guarantee. That $60 million persuaded and incentivized two German banks to put in $50 million, which in turn persuaded private investors to put in another $30 million. You've now got a $150 million fund, which is now investing into commercial agriculture in Africa. And ultimately, who are the beneficiaries of that? It's smallholder farmers. And those smallholder farmers have a better livelihood, they earn more income, and they can afford education and health care that can grow them and their families out of poverty. Another example would be housing. Uh, the world is rapidly urbanizing. Um, we have the risk, if we don't do anything now, of the growth of massive mega slums uh, in, in, uh, in poorer countries. There are solutions out there. Um, we can look close at home for those solutions. Uh, the UK, for example, uh, there is a, right now there is an impact investment fund. It's 300 million pounds. Uh, capital has been mobilized from pension funds in the UK, French pension funds, and private investors. That impact investment fund is investing into low-cost housing in the UK and allowing low-income families and first-time buyers to get on the property ladder. These models, where private money is going in for social outcomes, can be exported uh, globally. Um, another example, uh, clean tech, climate change. How do we move from old world, dirty, polluting technology into, into cleaner, more efficient technology. The picture on your uh, right is uh, NOR1. This went online uh, earlier this month. World's largest um, concentrated solar power uh, facility. Pretty cool. Um, this cost $9 billion to, to finance and set up. A consortium of European development banks invested $9, million, $9 billion, and very importantly, it was backed by a sovereign guarantee of the government of Morocco. This is the first in a series of major investments by the government of Morocco, facilitated by them, which would see Morocco have half of its energy mix come from renewables by 2020. And again, private money is at the heart of that. Closer to home, um, in the UK, we're seeing, uh, and now increasingly in the US, we're seeing the rise of the so-called pay-for-success contracts when it comes to the delivery of effective public services, also known as social impact bonds. Let's cut out the jargon. What does this practically mean? Uh, it basically means that private finance is used to invest in preventative social programs, whether it be for education, for healthcare, for reintegrating ex-offenders back into society. And local government will pay back the private sector, but only on successful performance of the program, on the, on the program achieving its outcomes. And in some cases, these programs are designed so that if the outcomes are exceeded in terms of the social uh, targets were overshot, the private sector actually gets a performance bonus. Um, you know, again, this is conceptual. What does it look like practically? So um, in, um, let's take uh, health, for example. Uh, 17 million people across the UK uh, have long-term chronic conditions. Asthma, heart disease, uh, diabetes. The estimate is this is 70% of the running costs of the NHS is spent treating these patients. It's huge, absolutely huge. Take that down to a community level. Uh, Newcastle, uh, 30,000 people in Newcastle have long-term chronic health conditions. Um, and if you fast forward 10, 20 years, you can imagine the, the costs on the local healthcare infrastructure. So a new program has been developed that is investing in uh, preventative programming rather than waiting 20 years to then you know, treat the, the costs of, of, of disease. What they're doing, 
um, is investing in a program that is focused on behavior change, going into low-income communities and talking to people about healthy lifestyles, about eating better, about exercise, about avoiding excessive drug and alcohol consumption, knowing that that behavior change will lead to long-term changes, positive changes in terms of the community, and of course, massive cost savings. Um, in this program, the, the private sector is actually the investor because nobody's quite clear whether it's going to work or not. And rather than the local government asking the, the taxpayer to fork out for a program that may or may not work, they're going to somebody who's willing to take risk, the private sector. So the private sector is, is putting in um, around uh, three million into this program. They will be, uh, if everything goes to plan, they will get a seven million payout from that three million. Pretty good return over a number of years. Um, the cost to local healthcare uh, could be up to 15% of their budget. That is way more than the, the payout to the investor. So there are clear, clear opportunities here. Another example would be um, uh, the elderly. Um, the costs of, we're, I think we're all worried about the, uh, the, the demographic crisis going forward. Um, the cost of aging is potentially huge uh, and the ability of families to afford um, health care and uh, elderly care is, is, is a real challenge. Uh, again, in the UK, there's a program which has been financed by the, the, the private sector, uh, which is looking at a solution, which is a community-driven solution for health care. So rather than having to find resources to, to uh, um, support the elderly in a care home infrastructure, it's identifying unemployed and underemployed people in the community who are willing to become carers and are willing to open up their homes to be cohabiting with the elderly and immediately you have a solution which is far more dignified and humane a community-based solution where elderly relatives can be down the road rather than in an institution and of course the cost savings for the the the, the public purse are huge the program uh, which is now piloting with private money again could save up to 50 million for local authorities uh, that are involved in that so how is all this relevant to Guernsey, you might ask. Well, what, are, what is the perception, unfortunately, that many have of, of Guernsey today? <sighs> That's the perception. We, we can't deny it. What is the reality? Well, for those of those who are coming into the island, that's the Boxing Day swim. So an island, huge community spirit, huge heart, huge talent. Um, Let's talk about, and it's touched on by Mark, let's talk about our industry, the, the main industry that's driving the economy here, finance. Um, an industry that many have talked about being uh, at a pivot point. Um, huge amounts of directives and regulation coming in. Um, a lot of pressure to conform and to uh, comply. Um, questions are very much asked about if the industry is fighting to keep its head above water, um, is there space to innovate? Is there space to stop and think and take time to see what the future could hold and how this island could, 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 could uh, innovate? Um, I say that this is an opportunity. Um, I say that actually, could we change the narrative? Could we turn the story around? Because right now, whatever we do, it's not gonna be enough. There will always be a uh, tax transparency crusader who comes out and bashes us, o uh, bashes us over the head. So um, we're damned if we do and we're damned if we don't. So if that's the case, can't we turn around the story and say, well, we've got an infrastructure here, we've got assets, we've got expertise. Why don't we perhaps change the narrative and become a center for financing for good, where we attract... Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps we can repurpose dormant or underutilized assets here on the island. Perhaps we can attract more capital to invest in solutions that address some of these global challenges. And they're not global, they're also local. Some of these ideas of, of pay for success models, we can use those to address some of the very, the very pressing problems we have here on the island. Healthcare, aging, uh, children and youth, for example. And you know what the great news is? It's actually already happening. So, um, for example, there are a number of 
clean tech funds already based here on the island. Um, if you think about it, social finance or impact investment actually has been happening on the island for many years. A number of banks have been investing repayable finance into Guernsey Housing Association to allow the community to build housing units, social housing units, uh, housing for the elderly. It's been happening, it's just not been called that. Um, private investors are putting money into um, playing fields, community infrastructure. Uh, also, we know that there are a number of private individuals and family offices that are investing into impact investment vehicles off-island. It's all happening, but it's sub-scale. And the opportunity that I see is that with the backing of the states and in partnership with some of the, the key outward-facing promotional uh, organizations such as uh, Guernsey Finance and Locate Guernsey, we could actually put together a really powerful story. Luxembourg's done it, in a way, with microfinance, and it's, it's a branding exercise. There's, there's, no, there's no jurisdictional uh, angle they have on this. Um, so I think that's my message to end up on today, that um, you know, I think collectively, we've, we've got the assets and the resources and the, and the creativity to, to do this. Um, so you know, imagine this, if, if we could make Guernsey the center of a, a global movement of, of solving the world's problems through, through finance for good. Wouldn't that be a good story to tell? Thank you. Thank you.